is more to uploading a YouTube video than you realize. Uploading a YouTube video with the right title, description, tags, and a lot of due diligence will help you stand out, you propel your video better, and you get more views and subscribers in the long run, leading to long-term channel growth. That's why today I'm here to tackle the very easy sounding how to upload a YouTube video in a masterclass that hopefully helps you tackle every fine detail and understand every important tweak that can help you stand above the rest. Now, first of all, today, as you can see here, this is my YouTube dashboard. Everyone's seen this before. You upload videos here. It gives you your statistics of how well your videos have done recently and how well you're growing. And if you've been uploading content on YouTube for a while, then you know the next step. You go to the top corner, you click the upload video option, and here you can either select a video from your hard drive or drag and drop. I'm selecting files and I'm using this one here, and then it will upload using my incredibly terrible internet connection at the moment because I'm running on a mobile 4G internet connection because I don't have a wired internet connection. Long story, it's all about moving offices. Video up here if you wanna see the tour. But you'll see here, I've uploaded the video. Now, there's a myth that if you upload it with a title already that it's gonna get you meta tag data and you're gonna get more views because the words of the video are in the, the title of the file. That's an old myth. But this video is all about how to write comments in the comment section, bold, italic, strike through, that kind of thing. Now that's a good place to start. I'll have a look at this title, how to write bold, italic, and strike through comments on YouTube. That's 65 characters in length. I personally would try and hope to get it down to around about 50. Why? Because on mobile device, anything after 50, you get that dot, dot, dot on a mobile screen. Now that title does explain exactly what that video is about. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy that into the top of my description. Right? But then I'm gonna go back and try and slim down the title. See, now I've got it to 51 characters. If I remove the exclamation mark, then it's more. 50, 50 bold italics and strike through comments on YouTube. Exactly what that video is about, condensed to 50 characters. Perfect. Now if I'm uploading using YouTube Shorts, then I'll try and make it even shorter, 40 characters in length, because then, once again, on the YouTube Shorts, it shows the first 40 characters, and then dot, dot, dot. Now as you can see, I've got vidIQ installed. This is one of my power tools. This is one thing that I absolutely love, and we'll revisit this shortly, but if you go to alanspicer.com forward slash vidIQ, you can download vidIQ for free, and if you choose to upgrade to their paid versions, then there's a 20% discount there, but you'll see some of the features and functionalities that I absolutely love there. Okay, so I've mastered the title. It's within 50 characters in length. Now, the description. This description needs to be at least a paragraph, if not two, spinning the concept of the title whilst being helpful. I always pad it out with phrases that you would also search for as a human being to find the answer to that question, especially on my how-tos. So you might actually just be looking for how to bold comments on YouTube, or how to italic comments on YouTube, or how to strike through comments on YouTube. So I need to weave those into the description, so therefore when you search for that, and you, you get that very specific answer to that very specific question, and it gives me a chance to rank specifically for that search term. Now here you can see the description that I've just written. How to write a bold italics and strike through comments on YouTube, that's the old title, the longer version of that search term, and then, Learn how to bold comments on YouTube, make comments italic on YouTube, and strike through comments on YouTube. You'll also notice that I put strike through as two separate words, just in case people type it wrong. Today we'll look at how you can make comments pop in YouTube video comments with bold, italic, and strike through comments. Now you can see there, I've twisted, I've spun, it's human, I've not keyword stuffed it, but it still reads, there's lots of rich content in there. That's a good solid, description at the start, and the first 173 characters, which is about possibly here, is what, when you search, there's, it might start picking keywords out of in the search results for relevancy. Anything underneath supports the video, but doesn't necessarily show up immediately on the search results page. Now here, you'll see that I've got timestamps. This is part of my upload defaults, which you can set up by going to settings and upload. Basically, when I upload a video, it's pre-populated with some of this content. I'm sure if I've got a tutorial, I'll link it in the description or the iCard accordingly. Now the timestamps are important. Why? Because if you want to jump to a very specific part of the video, 
video, maybe you only want to bold or you only want to italicize, then you can jump to a very specific time stamp in that video. So what I do is I look at my timestamps, I name the first one, once again, some kind of spin of the title, how to bold italic strike through YouTube comments. Once again, still could have been a title, but is also now a possible keyword. And I've started it with zero dot dot zero zero. I will now play the mini video and start filling in the timestamps for relevant areas. Make your comments stand out. Bold, italics, underline, strike through, comments that pop, maybe even attract attention or even some subscribers. That's what we talk about today. Here we go. Now, I'm just about to jump in to the tutorial. Okay. As you can see there, so that's the 12 second mark, okay? Now, I note that it's the tutorial in the timestamp. I go back down, I add another one and I keep watching. Okay, so you want your comments to stand out in the video comment section. So you scroll down, you load the comment sections, and you to bold. Okay, now this one is to bold. So once again, it's got to 24, 25 seconds. I'm gonna write 24, and now I write how to bold a comment on YouTube, or in this case, how to bold text in YouTube comments. Once again, another phrase that you could have searched for maybe to find this specific skill. Now you'll see that the video is deliberately created with a five, six, seven, 10 second buffer at the end. The reason for this is at the end of the video, I can now push to a related video. So in this case, I'm going to push to something that, that makes your video better or gains more subscribers, okay? Now, that means that the last five seconds of the video isn't necessarily relevant to the description. So I can either timestamp it outro, like I have done sometimes, or I use a tag that explains what it's pushing towards. So in this case, get more subscribers using this, for example. How to gain more subscribers. How to add a YouTube watermark, which will be the thing it's pushing towards. Next step in my description, you'll see watch next. What I do here is I list something that is related or has been mentioned in the video. So this mentions adding a YouTube watermark. I go and get the link for my watermark video and I add it to my description. Why? Because sometimes people watch the video and you'll be amazed how many people also read the description. I suggest maybe one or two watch next videos, that way they can jump in, or you can do a playlist if it's relatable there. And then as you scroll down, you'll see that I've got to check out my blog. I have some hashtags. Now these hashtags are relevant to me and consistent, but I will change them out from time to time. So Alan starts creating YouTube certified how-to education and vidIQ. Now these are things that are associated with me or my brand. Now in this case, I might also add YouTube comments or bold, for example, but if I was talking about subscribers or help, or if my video is about money and I'm talking about stock markets, then it could be stocks or stonks. And now at the bottom of the description, I have a few of my affiliate links. Here's my subscribe button for my channel. Here's watch my latest video. Here's my podcast. And here is a selection of affiliate links that I tend to find perform okay for me. For example, these are the overlays that pop up that say like or comment or a link to vidIQ, who I optimize my videos with, which I'll show you in a second, or a free audiobook, should you want to learn something for free. I also highly advise at the bottom that you have some kind of disclaimer if you're using affiliate links. This one says here, some of my links are affiliate links. These do not affect the price of the products or services referred to, but may offer commissions that are used to help me fund the free YouTube video tutorials on this channel. Thank you for your support. The reason for that is it needs to have some form of disclaimer so people don't assume that they're just random links. It covers your back and that way you don't get your videos removed for pushing people to affiliate links without disclosure. Next, you're looking at thumbnails. Now, I'll be honest, I've been lazy. I've not made a thumbnail for this one yet. So I'm going to sub in a thumbnail that I've just used recently. Have a look at this one, for example, download videos on mobile. Now, this is very important, and this is a vidIQ tool. The point of a thumbnail, the point of a thumbnail is to stand out to make them stop scrolling, and then two, make them click. Make it clear, concise, make them fully aware of what that video is about and to draw them in. Now on the right hand side, underneath the little preview, there is this tool here. What search terms do you want to rank for? Now this isn't about the ranking 
of your video. This is about how your video would look when ranking with your thumbnail. This way, you can preempt what your video looks like compared to your rivals and stand out. That's how I've increased my click-through rate from seven or eight percent this time last year to 11, 12 percent because I've been able to disrupt the pattern of what my thumbnail looks like compared to everybody else's. So I want to rank for bold comments on YouTube, for example. I click preview, and now this wonderful tool will now show me what my video would look like against others that are ranking for that term, but what their thumbnails would look like. Once again, this thumbnail happens to be a, a placeholder, right? But if you imagine that, that it says bold italic strike through comments, and I've got some kind of example, you can now see above, that's a red and white, it's kind of, the text is kind of small, my text would be huge, I've got some kind of emotive face or an arrow. That video got 14,000 views in 10 months. The video underneath, 146,000 views in three years, but has no thumbnail, it's just a screenshot of a mobile phone. Here, there's lots of text, loads of icons, 5,000 views in three years. Underneath, that one's a little bit better. YouTube video, bold comments, and then what looks like possibly Hindi and it's pointing at the thing. But once again, it's not huge, it's not pointing, it's not massive, okay? 2,000 views in two years, and these retitled it to 2020, tut tut. This one's a little bit better. Comments, bold, italics, more, 66,000 views in four years. What I'm learning there is that none of those videos are new because they're either, they're the oldest one there, the youngest one there is 10 months old. So I could jump in there and possibly steal that away with a really good thumbnail that pops, that stands out, right? And a video that delivers the quality and the answer that they need, not only in the title, the description, but in the thumbnails as well. So once again, bad example, I'm using a placeholder thumbnail, but hopefully as you scroll through here, you can see that mine has a little bit more of a human element, a little bit more professional. You've got the red, black, white, you've got my and you've got the big text. You'll immediately see what that video is about. So once again, I'll redesign this, but as an example, you can see what it looks like. Now, I can see what it looks like on desktop, you can see what it looks like on a tablet, and I can see what it looks like on a mobile phone. And now I can also see what it would look like against my rival videos on a home screen as well. Once again, all of these little texts, here's the tablet, and here's my search screen. Hopefully, you would see that thumbnail, and be willing to stop. You can, you can keep going back and going to the title, how to bold comments on YouTube, and I can keep seeing how it would look against my rivals, and if I don't like it, it can continue to tweak and twist. You'll see as well with the new phrase, how to bold comments, it's also showing me how it would highlight it here, how to write bold, how to bold YouTube, how to bold comments on YouTube. There you go. So all of that is here. And once again, it gets my rivals. That's a, a mobile phone. That happens to be a, a screen that the text is a little bit too small. Mine would still stand out. Now, scrolling down, playlists. Always make sure that you're putting it in some kind of playlist. That way people can continue to roll into your content. Now, mine are all tutorials, so I have tutorials set up. The important, is it made for kids? Yes or no? Yes, am I playing with kids' toys? No. Is it for an adult? So not made for kids. Age restriction, there's, there's no swearing, there's no inappropriate content, there's no blood, there's no guts, there's no gore, so I don't need to do that. Paid promotion, is there a video, is there something in there that I'm promoting? Hi, buy this thing, YouTube sent me that. No, it's just me teaching people, okay? So I don't need to tick this, but if there is a clear, here, Elegato sent me, then, then yes. Now I've got some preset tags in here. These are from my default upload. Now I'm gonna leave these be and we'll do the tags very shortly. But next, I click next, monetization. Do I wanna monetize? Yes, so I click on, what type of ads do I want? Overlays, the little ones that pop up here. Sponsored cards, if I click the i cards and there's something relevant, maybe I, I mention Harry Potter, so they want to put a film up here for you to watch and buy. Skippable ads, the ones at the start. Non-skippable ads, the ones that force you to watch it for uh, two minutes or whatever it happens to be. You can choose those accordingly. Now also, depending on the length of the video, if your video is over eight minutes, you can add pre-roll, mid-rolls, and post rolls. Pre roll before the video, mid roll, somewhere in the middle of that video, an advert can play. So say something really, really important, and then ta da, and there's an advert. 
You can break up your content accordingly and post roll. The video plays all the way through and then it'll play a video. If you wanna maximize your earnings, you turn all of these on. If you're worried about the behavior of people watching longer form content and you don't want to place an advert every 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes, then you can remove the mid rolls or you turn the mid rolls on and you allow YouTube to figure that out themselves where they'll put it in an appropriate position that doesn't harm the behavior of your channel. Next, add suitability. This is your way, your mea culpa, you, you admitting that the video is good or bad, right? Don't lie here, because YouTube will figure it out. Basically, you scroll down here and you, you're you honest. So you can see here, keep up the good work. It looks like you filled up this questionnaire accurately. Basically, I've been honest. As a result, we're using your input to determine whether or not your content is advertiser friendly. Your input is helping us monetize. View my ratings, for example. I've said over and over again that my content is monetizable and good. Why? Because it is, I'm not being silly. And I reviewed them all on my desktop, which I'll show you very shortly how to do. If I was to lie and there'd be something in there that's demonetizable, they would flag it and my trustworthiness would drop down. Now, say I was swearing, I'd go to inappropriate language. If it's light, say for ads, okay? If it's strong, uh, it's limited a little bit. And if it's extreme, yeah. Now you'll notice that if it's light ads, everything's fine, you still get premium. But if it's extreme, you would possibly risk getting a yellow icon. Now scrolling down, adult content, sexual behavior, romance, kissing, discussion. This is truly, you go through every fine detail and be honest, okay? Violence, edited, unedited, graphic, by law, raw footage, shocking content. Like are you going out of your way to deliberately shock people? Harmful, dangerous, drugs, hateful comment, derogatory comments, firearms, sensitive events, controversial issues. Now if you feel that none of those are relevant to you, then click none of the above, that's what I do, 98% of the time, and click next. And now it gives you the option to add in screens, but I do that in my edit page along with my info cards, okay? Click next. I can choose to make it private, unlisted, members only, or public, or schedule the video. If you want to learn how to schedule a video, it'd be in the iCard. I tend to leave mine private for now, and I click save, and I go to content, and the video is here. Right now, once again, this is a stand-in thumbnail. And now, I start with the important stuff, the tags, the end screens and stuff like that. So now I hop in and I start working on my tags. Now, because I've taken some time to pay attention to my title and use the keywords that I'm focusing on, you'll notice that vidIQ has now started to populate some of the keywords that I might want to use up here. Now, it's also suggesting them here as well, at the top of the description. What this is, is part of the boost system, it looks at all of the tags and the descriptions and it tries to recommend phrases that you need to sneak in, that you could use as tags, as you could use descriptions, that kind of thing. What I also do is, to, is take this as an advantage to start spinning in this, my second paragraph with these phrases in. Now, I take a while with these and I'll craft them carefully. Now, this is where it gets a little bit clunky and you need to work on it over and over to make sure that it's a, a more human sentence. But as you can see, I've, I've started here and this is the, only the first pass. I'll do it more and more, right? But I've started to eliminate some of the keywords up here. Consider including these highly searched keywords in your description. Now, you've noticed I've knocked off a couple from up here. And as I scroll down to my tags, I can then start adding very similar into my tag box. Now I'm going to remove ones here that aren't relevant, auto filled in ones from my upload defaults, but I now click the boost this video. What I now do is I start echoing the ones that were up above. How to bold comments on YouTube. I'll put the title in the tags as well. Right, what this does is it starts to prime vidIQ's tool down below for all of the key phrases that it likes. And when I've refreshed it, it's now bringing these back up, okay, which I can add very nicely, very quickly by adding them here. Bold, italics, comments, strike through, how to format your comments. Now what you're looking for here is a mix, a semantic 
widening. You, you think of how someone would search, how to bold a comment, how to make a comment bold, YouTube comments bold, make it comments bold, right? These are all a semantic search and you need to fill the tags so that YouTube over time can understand and weave that web that all of these words are relevant. Once you've added a load, you can always refresh it once again. Now you can do this manually without a vidIQ thing, by the way, just for reference, but you have to do a lot of the thinking outside the box and it may take a little longer. This takes a lot of the guesswork out of it for you and it even gives you kind of a score now I tend to advise that you these aren't gospel. It doesn't mean that you get a hundred, you, you get a score with a hundred and it's going to ping and immediately go viral, right? But this will help you understand how to dive into certain things and then it will slowly train your brain. Sometimes if I've got the time, I'll actually manually search for every single one and curate them myself. Or if I'm a rush, I jump down I boom, 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 and I fill up the 500 character limit. Now I've got to 501 out of 500 here. So in some cases I'll remove my name or I'll remove ones that aren't relevant. I'll go back through and I'll keep, you know, flicking through. But once I'm comfortable and I feel that all of those tags there are relevant to me, then that's those tags done. But that doesn't mean that I'm done looking at those tags in future, right? I can always go back, refresh the tags, see what other ones are relevant, or I can search by overall school keyword volume or competition. And you can always come back and change those as the video launches. Language, English, United Kingdom. Once again, set it to the, the language that it happens to be. Title in the description is English. You once again, you can change what it happens to be. Has this been shown on TV? 98% of people have, don't have to touch this. Recording location, video location, and license. Now the license, basically what this means is if it's a YouTube license, then it, it's all yours and only you use it unless you give permission and then you can claim against other people if they use your video. If you use Creative Commons license, what this means is that as long as they use your name, they can do whatever they want with that video. They can make a compilation video with it. Good example of this is the Vlog Brothers make all of their videos Creative Commons, but that also means that they can't go out and claim as many of those with copyright claims to, to monetize. Distribution anywhere, everywhere. If you only want to show on platforms that are monetized, then you only show them on platforms that are monetized everywhere, everywhere else. This basically means if someone embeds it on Twitter and it can't show an advert, then yes, it will stop it. Category, mine's education. This doesn't tend to make a huge difference. I've got a video in one of the iCards explaining why you'd pick a category, but it's just to give that little small piece of data to the data processor to, to help you once again uh, build up that soup as your channel grows. Comments, do you want to potentially hold harmful comments, I would advise yes. And then how would you like to sort those comments normally by top? And once again, if you want to add a fundraiser, if you, if this is gonna be a, a charity video, then you can add a fundraiser. Once again, I've got a tutorial in the iCard for this. Next important thing is the end screen. Click on end screen and I get to choose my elements. Now, what you're looking at is the last 20 seconds of the video right, and where you can overlay. And because I gave myself that last five seconds, that's where I put mine, because it's a minimum of five seconds. So I click play. At the point that I start talking, I, I make a mental note, okay, or I leave it there, and then I pull in the card that I want to use. I always advise that you have at least one subscribe button and at least one video. Whether it's the best viewed, whether it's suggested, or whether you're pointing to a set video, that's completely up to you. But you need to have something that you're following to. If it's completely blank, then if 40% of the people get to the end of your video, you're just leaving them hanging. But if you explain to them that you loved this, you'll love that one, there's a chance that they'll jump over to that video as well. Now, unfortunately, I timed it just a tiny bit wrong. So the last five seconds isn't five seconds, right? So you'll see here that it just overlaps just a little bit at the end of the tutorial. No harm. Okay because it now starts here, right? I've pulled some end screens from my previous video, so best four and a playlist here, and then I'm going to edit them specifically based on what Alan in this video now says. He used that to attract attention. Here's other ways to get subscribers. So now it's gonna be other ways to get subscribers. So I might use a playlist here. So I search for subscribers and then my channel name, because for whatever reason, you can't seem to search playlist based solely on your channel. And then I'm going to do here, I've got a playlist here of how to get um, subscribers in 2020. I'm gonna to push towards that one in this example. And I'm still gonna leave the best for viewer there. Why? Because the algorithm is going to be, serve them a video that might be more relevant for them and their viewing behavior recently. And now I click save. Remember to add iCards if you can. If you're pushing towards something that is relevant, once again, at the end of this video, I talk about 
videos that might get you more views, then I'm gonna add an iCard here. And once again, it's going to be the subscriber one that I, I, I found earlier. Once again, I'm gonna search for subscribers and then Alan, because I know that that's the name of my, my playlist. YouTube, please update this, by the way. And then I'll have an iCard. And then I've got some kind of teaser here. Please change this to something that is a hook, not just the name of the playlist. The top one is the custom message that displays underneath the iCard when they click on it. And the bottom one is the one that pops up in the top right-hand corner that hooks them in. Want more subscribers? Want to see my car? That kind of thing. And then I click Save. Now your video is ready to go live. So make sure that once it is live, you comment on your video at the top and you pin it, that way they engage. This is a question or an action. In this case, it's a question about tax, but I also, in some cases, push them towards a video that I've recommended or I ask them some kind of uh, conversation starter. Why? Because this is the first push towards interaction. Commenting means interaction. Interaction means behavioral metrics. Behavioral metrics means that you have a chance of breaking out in the YouTube algorithm. In fact, I mentioned that and discussed that in my Beat the YouTube Algorithm video here. And if you beat the algorithm, there's a chance that your channel will get views. In fact, my channel has 5 million views. And in this video that I'm going to make next week, I'm going to tell you exactly how much I earned from 5 million views. If it's not there, subscribe. It's coming soon.